Time now to talk soccer here on Highland on our League of Ireland chat this week. We're talking to former Finn Harps goalkeeper and current Cockhill Celtic manager Gavin Cullen. Gavin, good to see you again. Hi, Oisin. How's things? Uh, not too bad, uh, Gavin. Listen, we're going to talk Finn Harps. A cup defeat at the hands of Dundalk during the week went to extra time. Uh, do you think it was a missed opportunity by the Harps given everything that was going on around Dundalk this week and injuries and COVID and, and not going mm-hmm. well in the league? Maybe was it a, a missed opportunity for them? Oh, yeah, it certainly was. Like, as I say, Dundalk aren't the force they were a couple of years ago. Harps are above them in the league. Um, they've got a few good results this season against them as well. So after coming from behind with 10 men and getting a great result on, uh, on Friday night, you, you would expect and Harps would have went down there with their tails up and, and, and sensed a real opportunity to possibly get the semi-final and then maybe get the final this year in the, in the FA Cup. So I'd say the way the game panned out and watched the game myself, they're, they're, they've left disappointed losing an extra time, you know. Yeah. How do you think the legs will be on Friday night? Because Ollie alluded to it after the game on, on, on Tuesday that when you play five games basically in a, in, in a fortnight, uh, it can mm. be telling on the legs and then you throw in extra time as well. So how big a factor is that going to be come Friday night against Bowes, Gavin? Oh, it will be, surely. Um, like I know Bowes played on Monday night as well, but... Uh, Bows are a lot of full-time players, although Harps have some full-time players. That they're not all full-time. There's a lot of them working as well. So it is a big test, you know, going to, to play Dundalk Tuesday night and the travelling home then going to work on Wednesday morning uh, again and probably get, they'll probably get one recovery session done in between, not much training. Um, so he is right. It's a big test and Harps squad at the minute since, uh, since uh, they've lost a few during the summer is light. So it is. So he hasn't a real lot of options to make a lot of changes. So it will be a big test, and, and Bose will be a slightly fresher because of the full time squad. Yeah, but at the same time, and saying that, they know that they can go on the road and take a one against some of the big sides, Gavin. So they're doing. They, and they, Bose, they certainly can, although I think away to Bose earlier on the season is probably the heaviest to feel the season. Um, Bose, I think, it was 4 0. If I remember, um, Bose, Bose are capable of scoring goals of exciting attacking players. And, and it will be a dangerous game for Harps. But at the same time, you never rule, rule Harps out of getting a result anywhere at the minute. Uh, more goals from Sean Boyd would be good. He's he's sort of on form at the minute, isn't he? He is. He's fairly silenced his critics. Um, I know a lot of Harps fans are fairly critical of him, even coming back and signing for the club. But he's only a young lad. Um, he obviously can play a bit, judging by what he's done the last week. A couple of his goals were, were, were absolutely brilliant. And... And he's excited the crowd, so hopefully they'll, they'll he might get a wee run now and maybe show them what he can do. Yeah, and of course on the other side of things, and on the Bulls end, you've got Mr. Georgie Kelly who continues to go on scoring spree, so he does in, in, in matches. Yeah, and, uh, he grabbed a couple of the last night against Derry, so he did. He got the 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 goal mm. that levelled things up for Bulls the last night against Derry. Yeah, it was like the the equalising goal he scored was absolutely brilliant. Um, they take that ball in his chest inside the box under pressure and swivel and turn and strike the ball the way he did. It shows a man on form. He's he, he's been brilliant this season. Um, I think he's fulfilling all his potential. We all sort of knew he had it over the years. Um, coming from Derry, um, he was a great number nine, good striker, back to goal striker. Again, got his move to UCD then Dundalk, um, where he, he never really came to the fore. Whereas now at Bowes with the run and the way they play, it suits him and he's starting to score a lot of goals. Um, he's, he's been the best striker in the league this year, um, no doubt. And um, I'm sure the rumours are going about at the minute about him going to Derry next season. Um, looks good and uh, it would be nice to see that happening, to be honest. Yeah, he's starting in fine form, but of course, all sorts of rumours about him coming back to Derry. I see Michael Duffy's linked with Derry as well. Yeah, the two of them are heavily linked. And yeah. I, I even heard yesterday that... that that they're, that's, they're sorted so um, I don't know with Patrick McLean going back to it's a very exciting times at Derry at the minute you know yeah and what about Derry this weekend Longford Town uh, would be a game that you would expect Derry to win given they've got that home advantage against the bottom side yeah you would um, Derry have been nothing short of brilliant since Roy Higgins took over same squad of players um, just a, there's an energy about them there's a confidence about them and to, to get up to the top four in the league from where they were and we, we discussed it ourselves that like I never seen them finishing above Harps at that stage of the season when what well, before Rory took over. So it's it's a credit to him and his, his staff, the way they've turned things around. And at the minute they're a match for anybody and I would fully expect them to take a three points there. 
Yeah. Uh, Derek currently sitting, look, just looking at the table, they're what? They have 39 points <clears throat> and the top two have 56 and 50. So there's uh, an 11 point gap to the top two there for Derek. Right. Um, they may close that before the end of the season. But do you think if they were to add the likes of Georgie Kelly and Michael Duffy, that 11, 12 point gap to the top can be closed next year? Yeah, look, there's, I suppose, a lot, a lot has been said with Phil Bernardi and, and the sale of his business and, and the, the investment to Derry at the minute. So, um, th- there's, there's talk that they want, they want a league within the next three years. Um, I fully expect them to, the way the players have been linked with and the, and the, and the possible finance at their disposal, that they'll, they'll, they'll probably be looking to go and give the league a go next season. Um, the players you're talking about there will, would improve any side. Um, adding the fact that they are local as well, you no, know, it, it does it does help that little bit. So look, it is exciting times, and 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 if Derry get back to where they they should be, as a as a football city and a club, look, it'll be only great for the area and in, in general up here, you know. Yeah, well, the current side that's leading the way in the league are the defending champion Shamrock Rovers. They're taking on <laughs> St Patrick's Athletic this weekend. So it's the top two doing battle here. Gavin is the gap. Yeah. Going to stay at six points. Is Rovers going to go nine ahead, or are St. Pat's going to be able to pull it back to three? Where's this one going to go? Uh, good question. I think I think a one or a draw for Rovers, and and you're probably looking at them going on and f- finishing and winning the league. I think if St. St. Pat's have to go all out for the three points, if they do, and they have title aspirations, then it could could be an instant run on. But uh, as I said all season, and I don't see it any different. I, I can't see past Rovers winning this league this year, and I, I think they will. Do whatever it takes to, to get the to get the league title and Waterford against Drogheda United. <clears throat> this is a game that I'm sure the Harps management and supporters will be yeah. keeping a very close eye on because Harps are stuck in between the two of them in seventh position. Yeah. Harps four behind Drogheda and they are four ahead of Waterford. So I would say an outcome of the share of the spoils in that one would keep everybody involved with fun Harps happy, so they would. It probably would, yeah. Um it probably would, or even a draw out of victory to keep uh, Waterford down, but Drogheda Dr- have been a bit of a free fall recently, so like they could be caught up on, on in this at the minute. And, and Waterford have, uh, along with Harps, have put uh, two great runs together, which you would have wrote Waterford off a few months ago. They, they've been, they've been very good and look look a good side now as of Harps, you know. And that's brought Dundalk right into the equation, which it's hard to believe at, at the start of the season nobody would have guessed that. But they're in they're in real danger of the playoff position at the minute as well. The way yeah. Things yeah, I was listening to Oshin Langan on his <coughs> uh, podcast, his League of Ireland podcast. Uh, he was talking to Fun Harps player Sean Boyd, and he asked the question, "He's looking up, or he's looking down." Now, Sean, mm-hmm. Sean would answer it in, in such a way that they take each match as it goes, <coughs> as, as mm-hmm. it pans out. If there is an opportunity to look up, that they will. Where, which way do you think they're looking, Gavin? Up or down? <laughs> with 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 all in charge, I think they're always looking down, okay. um, and that's been drummed into them. But look, I think. Generally, if Harps stay up, it's an achievement. Most seasons, earlier on the season, I thought they, they had an opportunity to push on, um, which they obviously went in the run that, of, of poor results in mid season and, and sort of derailed them a bit. But look, you would like to say yes, let's let's finish in the top six or whatever. But I think if, if push comes to shove and and and, and Harps stay up by a point at the end of the season, I think I think it's job done again. Yeah. Uh, two other teams playing. They're meeting at Oriel Park. Dundalk against Sligo Rovers this coming weekend as well. Uh, Gavin, Dundalk's focus, I'm, I'm sure, uh, is going to be, from a European perspective, won the cup again. That, that's what they need to do if they are, if they are going to achieve that. But uh, they also need a couple of ones in the league too, so they do. They do, surely. They they, they, they obviously have to stay in the league. Like It couldn't... Yeah. It, it doesn't fathomable for them and the budgets and the money is involved that, that they could even be near relegation, but they are. Um, they obviously have a chance in the cup. They're now in the semi-final, um, and they probably are a match for anybody on the day. But um, look, if, if, if the worst case scenario and they do end up in a playoff, I'd say they would be still too strong for anybody in the first division. But it would be it would be on a knife edge, and it would be a poor poor season for Dundalk if it ended up like that. Yeah, I know we were talking about rumours earlier in the piece about players going to to Derry City. There's also <coughs> rumours that the Peak Six group. But Owen mm-hmm. Dundalk may, may be selling up this year. Is that is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or are they looking at their investment now and going to themselves, why did we bother getting involved in this? I would say you're possibly right with that statement. Um, yeah, there's there's rumours this week that as a stat sports yeah. are in talks with, with, with taking over Dundalk. So look, 
it, I suppose it's always good when there's when there's money or anything invested in, in the League of Ireland and clubs, but there's always that danger too when when these investors are, are people that sort of you know they, they, they get fed up or they they don't see no returns, which there which there probably never is in the League of Ireland. Um, and then they leave. What what ship do they leave the club on? No, and and Dundalk haven't really improved facilities or steady or stuff like that. So <clears throat> there's a danger of that uh, as well. Um, I know there's a few few clubs over the years that have, have had investment and then the investment pulled out and the clubs struggled uh, and went bust at times. So there is a danger of that. But look, if, hopefully they do get new investors or new owners and and they do push the club on with the with the right focus within the club, you know. Yeah. Finally, then just back to the Harps, obviously on the road against <clears throat> Bowes. Is the game on Friday night a fixture that Finn Harps are capable of winning, Gavin? Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think Harps are capable of turning over anybody in the league this season. Now, uh, at Dalymount, Bowes and the farm then they scored three against Derry the other night. The forwards on on fire. Um, they're well organised, good side, and they're obviously pushing for Europe as well. Um, so it's a tough ask, and, and as I say, if, if you asked Harps now, they would take a point because of the games they've had and all. But you never say never, like refereeing decisions, um, you know, a bit of luck or whatever, and, and they could beat them. But look, I would say, I would safely say, Bows are going to their favourites, and if Harps get anything, anything out of the game, they'll be happy. Yeah. Okay. Listen, Gavin, good to talk to you as always, and we we'll hope we get a good result for Harps uh, this coming Friday night. Thanks, Gavin. Good Thanks very much. Good man.